So in this question, we have been given a sequence 25, 22, 3 fourths, 20 and a half, 18, 1 fourth and so on. Now in this question, we have to find out the smallest positive term of the given sequence. All right. So in the question, we have been given the sequence where we have 25, 22, 3 fourths, 20 and a half, 18, 1 fourths and so on. And we have to find out the least or the smallest positive term of the sequence. As you can see, we have come down from 25 to 22, 3 fourths to 20 and a half to 18, 1 fourth. That means we are talking about a decreasing sequence. And if the sequence is decreasing, if the terms of the sequence is decreasing, then some point it will cross the threshold of zero and become negative. Now, right before it crosses the threshold of zero and becomes negative, we will get the smallest positive term of the sequence. All right. So what I'm going to do here is first find out the difference between the consecutive terms. Now, as you can see here, we have 25, we have 22, 3 fourths, we have 20 and a half. So we have a whole number and we have mixed fractions. All right. Now, it's little difficult to work around with the whole numbers and mixed fractions. So what I'm going to do here is convert all the terms of the sequence into fractions with the denominator as 4. So we can write 25 as 100 by 4. We can write 22 3 fourth as 22 multiplied by 4 plus 3 divided by 4, which is equal to 91 by 4. Similarly, we can write 20 and a half as 41 by 2. Clearly, the denominator is not 4. So I'll multiply the denominator by 2 and the numerator by 2. So what I'll get is 82 divided by 4. Now, what will be the fourth term? It would be 18 multiplied by 4 plus 1 divided by 4, which is equal to 73 by 4. All right. So the sequence now becomes 25. No, <laughs> the sequence now becomes 100 by 4, comma, 91 by 4, comma, 82 by 4, comma, 73 by 4. And it keeps on going. Now, it becomes really easy to calculate the difference between the consecutive terms. So what is 91 by 4 minus 100 by 4? It's negative 9 by 4. What is 82 by 4 minus 91 by 4? Well, it is also negative 9 by 4. And what is 73 by 4 minus 82 by 4? It is also negative 9 by 4. That means the given sequence in the question is an arithmetic sequence with the first term as 100 by 4 and the common difference as negative 9 by 4. Now, if I have to calculate the nth term of this given arithmetic sequence, I can calculate by using the formula of Tn equal to a plus n minus 1 times d. All right. What's the value of a? 100 by 4 plus n minus 1 times d, what's the value of d? It's negative 9 by 4, all right? So if I simplify it further, what I will get is 100 by 4 minus 9n by 4 plus 9 by 4, which is equal to 109 by 4 minus 9n by 4. I'll tell you one thing, speaking out 109 by 4 minus 9n by 4 is like a tongue twister for me. So please uh, do not mind if at times I might speak it wrong, all right? So it's like a tongue twister speaking out that Tn is equal to 109 by 4 minus 9n by 4, all right? So this is the nth term of the given sequence. Now, what I'm going to do here is put this less than 0, all right? Why am I going to put this less than 0? So that I'm able to find out when... At what point are we crossing the threshold of zero and becoming negative? Or I would say the terms are becoming negative, all right? So when I put 109 by 4 minus 9n by 4 less than zero, what I'll get is 9n is greater than 109, or we can say that n is greater than 109 divided by 9. All right, now 109 divided by 9 will be number greater than 12. That means n is greater than 12 or I can say that t13 or the 13th term of the given sequence will be the first negative term. If t13 or the 13th term is the first negative term, then 
ट्वेल्थ टर्म विल बी द लास्ट पॉजिटिव टर्म और विल बी द लीस्ट पॉजिटिव टर्म सो वी हैव गॉट द वैल्यू ऑफ एन एस ट्वेल्व इफ आई पुट दैट वैल्यू ऑफ एन एस ट्वेल्व इन दिस एक्सप्रेशन आई गेट टी ट्वेल्व इज इक्वल टू वन जीरो नाइन डिवाइडेड बाई फोर माइनस नाइन मल्टीप्लाइड बाई ट्वेल्व डिवाइडेड बाई फोर which can be written as 109 by 4 minus 108 by 4 which is equal to 1 by 4 so the least or the smallest positive term of the given sequence is 1 by 4 which is option d so in this question we have to find out the largest number common to both the sequences given by 1 11 21 31 going up to 100 terms and 31 36 41 46, 46 going up to 100 terms all right so in this question we have been given two sequences i'm going to name the sequence 1 11 21 31 31 going up to 100 terms as s1 and i'll be referring to it as sequence 1 and i'm going to name 31 36 41 46, 46 going up to 100 terms as s2 and i'm going to refer to this sequence as sequence 2 all right so if i calculate the difference between the consecutive terms of sequence 1 what i'll get is 11 minus 1 which is 10 21 minus 11 10 31 minus 21 10 and this keeps on going till 100 terms so we have the arithmetic sequence with the first term as 1 and the common difference as 10 all right so s1 or the sequence 1 is an arithmetic sequence with the first term as 1 and the common difference as 10 all right now if we talk about the sequence 2 which is 31 36 41 46 46 and so on if we calculate the difference between the consecutive terms we'll get 36 minus 31 which is 5 41 minus 36 which is also 5 and 46 minus 41 which is also 5 that means even the sequence 2 is an arithmetic sequence with the first term as 31 and the common difference as 5 now what i'm going to do here is equate the nth term of sequence 1 with the mth term of the sequence 2 So what we'll get is one plus n minus one times ten is equal to thirty one plus m minus one times five. If I simplify further, what I'll get is one plus ten n minus ten is equal to thirty one plus five m minus five. Now I can rearrange these terms, and when I rearrange these terms, I'll get ten n is equal to five m. Plus thirty one minus one plus ten minus five, which is same as five m plus thirty five. All right. So ten n is equal to five m plus thirty five. And if I divide this complete equation by five, I'll get two n is equal to m plus seven. Now I'm going to put the value of m as hundred, and what we'll get is two n is equal to hundred and seven. or we can say that n is equal to 107 by 2 all right so m equal to 100 is an acceptable value of m and the largest possible value of m but n equal to 107 by 2 is not an acceptable value by us because n denotes the number of terms and the number of terms cannot be a fraction all right so m equal to 100 is not an acceptable value because n is equal to 107 by 2 for m equal to 100 what we are going to do next is put m equal to 99 in the expression 2n is equal to m plus 7 so what we'll get is 2n is equal to 99 plus 7 which is 106 or i can say that n is equal to 106 divided by 2 which is 53 all right so the 99th term of the sequence 2 will be equal to the 53rd term of sequence 1 and that will be the largest common number between both the sequences all right so when i put n is equal to 53 in 1 plus n minus 1 times 10 what i will get is 1 plus 53 minus 1 times 10 which is equal to 1 plus 520 which is equal to 521 all right so 521 is the largest common number between both the sequences and this is given to us in option d 
So in this question, we have been given that the pth term of an AP is small a, the qth term of an AP is small b, and the rth term of an AP is small c. Then we have to find out the value of a multiplied by q minus r plus b multiplied by r minus p plus c multiplied by p minus q. All right. So in the question, it has been given that the pth term of an AP is small a, the qth term of an AP is small b, and the rth term of an AP is small c. Then we have to find out the value of a multiplied by q minus r plus b multiplied by r minus p plus c multiplied by p minus q. All right. So what I'm going to do here is find out the pth term, find out the qth term, find out the rth term and equate them to a, b and c respectively. All right. Now we know that the nth term of an AP is given by Tn which is equal to a plus n minus 1 times d where a is the first term. Well, in this question, we have to name the first term as k because in this question, it has been given that the pth term of an AP is a. All right. So now we are going to consider the first term as k. So we will get Tn is equal to k plus n minus 1 times d. Now, if I calculate the pth term, I will get k plus p minus 1 times d, which is equal to a. Similarly, if I calculate the uh, qth term, what I will get is k plus q minus 1 times d, which is equal to b. And if I calculate the rth term, I will get k plus r minus 1 times d, and this is equal to c. All right. Now, I'm going to name them as 1, 2, and 3. So if I subtract 2 from 1, what I'll get is PD minus D minus QD plus D is equal to A minus B. Or I can say that P minus Q is equal to A minus B divided by D. Similarly, when I subtract 3 from 2, what I will get is QD minus D minus RD plus D is equal to B minus C. Or I can say that Q minus R is equal to B minus C divided by D. All right. So whenever I'm subtracting 2 from 1 or 3 from 2, the term K will cancel out. All right. So K and K will cancel out. And what we are left with is P minus Q is equal to A minus B divided by D and Q minus R is equal to B minus C divided by D. Similarly, when I subtract 1 from 3, I'll get RD minus D minus PD plus D and this is equal to C minus A. Now, if I simplify it further, I will get R minus P is equal to C minus A divided by D. All right. So we have P minus Q, which is equal to A minus B divided by D. Q minus R is equal to B minus C divided by D. And R minus P is equal to C minus A divided by D. But in the question that has been asked, what is the value of A times Q minus R plus B times R minus P plus C times P minus Q? So I'm going to multiply this first equation. P minus Q is equal to A minus B divided by D with C. And I'm going to multiply the equation containing Q minus R with A and the equation containing R minus P with B. So what I'll get is C multiplied by P minus Q and this is equal to AC minus B times C divided by D. And uh, here I will get A multiplied by Q minus R which is equal to B times A minus C times A divided by D. Similarly, at last what we'll get is B times R minus P is equal to C times B minus A times B divided by D. Now, I'm going to add these three equations. On the left hand side, we'll get A multiplied by Q minus R plus B multiplied by R minus P plus C multiplied by P minus Q. And this is equal to AC minus B times C divided by D plus B times A minus C times A divided by D plus CB minus AB divided by D. All right. If I simplify it further, what I will get here is 0 by D. How? AC and negative CA cancel out each other because the denominator is common in three terms. It is D. So we can simply add the numerators. 
So what we'll have is AC minus CA, which will cancel out each other. We have negative B times C and positive C times B. They both will cancel out each other. We have BA and negative AB. They both will cancel out each other. And what we will get is 0 by D. All right. Now, this is the expression given to us in the question. And it had been asked, what is the value of this expression? Well, the value of this expression is 0, which is given to us as option B. So in this question, we have been given that if fifth term of a GP is 2, then we have to find out the product of the first nine terms of this GP. All right. So in the question, it has been given that the fifth term of this GP is 2. Then we have to find out the product of the first nine terms of this GP. I'm going to take the first term as A and the common ratio as R. If A is the first term and R is the common ratio, then the fifth term is equal to A multiplied by R raised to power 4 and this is equal to 2. Okay. Now, in the question, it has been asked, what is the product of the first nine terms? So, let's write down those terms. What is the first term? A. I am multiplying this with the second term, which is AR. I am multiplying this with the third term, which is AR square. And this keeps on going till the ninth term. What is the ninth term? A multiplied by R raised to power 8. Okay. So how many A's are there? There are going to be 9 A's because we have 9 terms. So we will get A raised to power 9. When I multiply these terms, I will get A raised to power 9. Now, how many R's are there? Well, for the first term, we have R raised to power 0. For second, we have R. For third, we have R square. And it keeps on going till R raised to power 8. As the base is same, the powers will get added up. So we will have 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus going till 8. Now, the product of the first 9 terms is A raised to power 9 multiplied by R raised to power 0 plus 1 plus 2 going till 8. What is the sum of the first eight natural numbers? Well, the sum of first eight natural numbers is given by 8 multiplied by 8 plus 1 divided by 2. I have used a formula here, which is the formula for sum of first n natural numbers. And the formula for the sum of first n natural numbers is given by n multiplied by n plus 1 divided by 2. In this case, n is equal to 8. So the sum of the first 8 natural numbers would be 8 multiplied by 8 plus 1 divided by 2. So if I simplify this further, I will get 36. Okay. So what is the product of the first 9 terms? Well, that is a raised to power 9 multiplied by r raised to power 36. And I can write this as a multiplied by r raised to power 4 whole power 9. Now, in the question, it has been given that the fifth term is 2 and we have earlier established that the fifth term is a multiplied by r raised to power 4. So, I'm going to put the value of a multiplied by r raised to power 4 as 2 in this equation. What I will get is product of first 9 terms of the GPs is equal to 2 raised to power 9, which is equal to 5, 1, 2, which is given to us as option B. So in this question, we have been given that x is the pth term of an AP, y is the qth term of an AP, and z is the rth term of an AP. It has been also given that x is the pth term of a GP, y is the qth term of a GP, and z is the rth term of a GP. Then we have to find out the value of x raised to power y minus z multiplied by y raised to power z minus x multiplied by z raised to power x minus y. All right. So in the question, it has been given that x is the pth term of an AP, y is the qth term of an AP, and z is the rth term of an AP. If I consider the first term of this AP as capital A and the common difference as capital D, then I can say that x is equal to A plus P minus 1 times D. Okay, so here A is the capital A and D is the capital D. Similarly, I can say that Y is equal to capital A plus Q minus 1 times capital D and 
Z is equal to capital A plus R minus 1 times capital D. If I subtract these two equations, I will get X minus Y is equal to PD minus D minus QD plus D, which is equal to P minus Q times capital D. If I subtract these two equations, I will get Y minus Z is equal to QD minus D minus RD plus D, which is equal to Q minus R times capital D. Now, if I subtract the expression of X from the expression of Z, I will get Z minus X is equal to RD minus D minus PD plus D, which is equal to R minus P times capital D. Okay, we have got the value of X minus Y. It is equal to P minus Q times capital D. The value of y minus z is q minus r times capital D and the value of z minus x is r minus p times capital D. In the question, it has been also given that x is the pth term of a GP, y is the qth term of a GP and z is the rth term of a GP. Now, if I consider the first term of this GP as small a and the common ratio as capital R, then we can say that x is equal to small a multiplied by capital R raised to power P minus 1 and Y is equal to small a multiplied by capital R raised to power Q minus 1 and Z is equal to small a multiplied by capital R raised to power small r minus 1. Now in the question it has been asked what's the value of X raised to power Y minus Z multiplied by Y raised to power Z minus X multiplied by Z raised to power x minus y okay i'm going to put the value of x y and z from these three relations what i will get is a multiplied by r raised to power p minus 1 whole raised to power y minus z this is further multiplied by a times r raised to power q minus 1 power z minus x multiplied by a r raised to power a times r raised to power small r minus 1 raised to power x minus y. Okay. If I take the base as a and add the powers, I will get a raised to power y minus z plus z minus x plus x minus y. Similarly, if I take the base as r and add the powers, I will get r raised to power p minus 1 multiplied by y minus z plus q minus 1 multiplied by z minus x plus small r minus 1 multiplied by x minus y, okay? If I simplify this expression, which is y minus z plus z minus x plus x minus y, what I will get is 0 because negative z and positive z will cancel out each other, negative x and positive x will cancel out each other, and positive y and negative y will cancel out each other. So we will get a raised to power 0, which is 1. Now, if I talk about the exponent of r, what I have here is p minus 1 multiplied by y minus z plus q minus 1 multiplied by z minus x plus r minus 1 multiplied by x minus y. Earlier, we had seen that x minus y is equal to p minus q times d and y minus z is equal to q minus r times d and z minus x is equal to r minus p times d. I'm going to put these values of x minus y, y minus z and z minus x in this relation. So what I will get is p minus 1 multiplied by q minus r times capital D plus q minus 1 times uh, small r minus p times capital D plus r minus 1 times p minus q times capital D. If I simplify it further by factoring out d, what I will get is pq minus pr minus q plus r plus qr minus pq minus r plus p plus pr minus rq minus p plus q okay so here what i will get is zero again positive pq negative pq negative pr positive pr negative q positive q positive r negative r 
positive P, negative P, positive QR, negative QR. And this complete expression is equal to 0. So we had A raised to power 0 and we had R raised to power 0. So this is equal to 1. That means the value of this expression is 1, which is given to us as option C.